Warning, we are about to spoil the first seven episodes of Hannibal Season 1. If you have not seen the show and plan on watching it, click away now and then come back after you're done. But if you have seen the show or do not care, please continue watching. What's the deal with human food? Is it actually humans? Or is it food? <laughs> That's the worst opening joke if we use that. Hello, everybody, and Welcome to Cinema Roulette. Today we have a very, very exciting episode because, uh, were you going to say anything? No? No, no? I, I was letting you continue. Okay. I, I just, just have you to, said you were, I, what's I, so exciting about this episode? I don't know. I have I want to know. you to interrupt me, but okay. Uh, <laughs> I never interrupt you. Mm. I'm a gentleman host. Okay. Well, that's good to know. But yes, um, this is a show that... Um, See, the comedic thing would have been to like interrupt you right afterwards, but I wouldn't do that because, again, I'm a gentleman host. <clears throat> so... <laughs> so today is one um, is a television show that me and Justin had not seen before. Well, you saw it once, but you were... I saw it, like, part of the first episode when I was younger, and I was not in the right mental place for this show yeah um so yeah not like i was depressed i just wasn't expecting what it was yeah because it's it's very different if you've seen the original movies or maybe i don't know i haven't read the book so maybe if you've read the source material it's probably different from that too but today is the television show hannibal is this where you do like the really cool intro thing yes We should probably get back to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, because all this was cut. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like none of it was cut. Ba, 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 That's ba, up to ba, ba, you. Ba, ba, ba. There, that would be a I, good joke. It could be. <laughs> I just don't want to waste everyone's fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> if we didn't want to waste their time, we wouldn't be making a podcast. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I am in a jokey mood. Okay. <laughs> uh, Hannibal, this... we fucking started watching this. Is that really Directed how by... we're starting this? Is this really how we're starting I don't this? know. Hold on, I was going to keep talking. Okay, fine, fine. Hannibal, a show done by a man who cannot have a show that isn't cancelled. I feel... I don't remember... I feel bad for him because he did uh, Dead Like Me and Pushing Up Daisies, which are both really good shows. Is his name Brian Fuller? I think so. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, it's probably yeah, I'm not going to take... Okay. But, um, yeah, I feel sorry for him, because like you said, there... Um, I don't want to reiterate what he just said, so I'm just going to be quiet. Okay. Uh, the, that is the reason I was in the wrong mindset when I originally watched this show, because I knew he did Pushing Up Daisies and Dead Like Me, so I was expecting something a lot more lighthearted and fun. Plus, I think I watched Silence of the Lambs, like, months beforehand. Yeah, So, yeah. I had the comparison of Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal. It just, all those mixing together does not get this show at all. Yeah, because this, this show, and while the original um, Hannibal movies were definitely, like, very symbolic and had some, like, it was more of a deeper, like, thought thing and had a lot of psychological themes, this, this show is way more art house than any of that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a quote out there of, uh, what'd you say his name, the career's name was again? Brian Fuller. There's like a quote from Brian Fuller telling directors of episodes, don't come in expecting to make a horror show, think of making an art house film. Yeah. And, and it goes really far down that path. Like, cause I know beforehand we found like people, didn't you say like people told you the third season was really trippy? 
yeah, that's where they just kind of go really all out. But I'm worried now because the series, as like in the first seven episodes, there's some really trippy shit that goes on in there. But it's really cool. It's really well done. This show, yeah, because I, I, I didn't really know much about this show. I knew that like it was renowned for like its um, cinematography and obviously being like just a great horror thriller TV show. But I'd never seen anything from it. I knew that Mads Mikkelsen was the main lead actor, and I probably butchered your name. Forgive me if I did. <laughs> Um, Probably, yeah. but yeah, I had never seen any like video or pictures from it, so I went into this almost completely blind. <laughs> but yeah, it's. It... I don't know how to segue here. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, what should we talk about first? Then should we like give a synopsis of the episodes or like things that we liked or like episodes we liked? Um, I I think I'll do a quick summary of the portion we watched. Yeah, like you like you can just say the setup of the show and then we can talk about it if you want, but. Yeah, because um, we I forget his name, the main character's name, and it's super easy. Hold oh, on. Uh, Will Graham. Will. Yeah. Will Graham. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, okay. Will Graham is well. He used to be a crime scene investigator for the FBI, and he has sort of this ability to get in the mind of a killer and figure out exactly what they did and why they did it. Well, maybe not exactly why they did, but he's able to get in the head, heads of different killers. Yeah, he's able to, like, guess how they did it fairly accurately. Like, judging And then them. Lawrence Fishburne comes up to him while, because uh, Will Graham has become a teacher. Because apparently being in the minds of psychopaths could be damaging. <laughs> but uh, Lawrence Fishburne comes in and is like, yo, we got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> there's a murderer going around we can't solve it but we know you can and he's like fine so will graham's helping find the murder and he goes to get help from this wonderful doctor named hannibal lecter because mm -hmm. to... i mean he's he's a psychiatrist right yeah he's a psychiatrist in this yeah. he used to be a surgeon mm-hmm this is this is important for people who know nothing about Hannibal Lecter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, does anyone like well, I guess there could be someone who doesn't know who Hannibal Lecter is. Yeah, I mean he's he's one of those like iconic horror movie um villains, I wanna I, kinda ish. Like, just figures. One of those iconic horror figures. Like everyone knows about like Hannibal. But is he as popular as say like, you know, Frankenstein or Freddy Krueger or no, Jason? No, he's not nearly as popular as that, but I, I think if you like I if I'd be surprised if there was someone out there who didn't know who Hannibal was, but I'd understand. Yeah, that's fair. I mean he hasn't really been the limelight except for the show, mm -hmm. so Yeah, this was the last time anything Hannibal related was adapted, wasn't it? For a while. I'm sure more will come in the future. Mm -hmm. But um, Will gets help from Hannibal, Hannibal Lecter, another psychologist, and I think Hannibal is also making sure Will is stable enough to be in the field. Yeah, that's part of the reason that Lawrence Fishburne pairs him with um, Hannibal, is that um... Is it Fishburne or Fishburg? Fishburne. Oh, whoops. Uh, have you been saying Fishburg this whole time? I have, yeah. I don't know if I'm more worried that you thought it was that, or I'm more worried that I hadn't picked up that you were doing that. The answer is yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's part of the reason he pairs him with him, because he knows that, like, obviously, this will fuck with your mind, and that's the reason he left in the first place. So Hannibal's there to kind of, you know, help him cope with that and just make sure he's not going too far over the edge. However, uh, spoilers, Hannibal's kind of a psychopath, so that may not be the best thing. Yep. <laughs> but he's a logical psychopath, which is more worrying. Oh yeah, that that's kind of what I loved about Hannibal Lecter, is he did do all this fucked up shit, but at the same time, you could tell that he was like a genius. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, he knows exactly what he's doing, yep. and that's what's terrifying. Mm -hmm. Uh... But they they go on. The, they're basically both working on this case where a bunch of college girls are getting violently uh, taken apart, like sort of like a. Oh, what is, I'm trying to think of 
they're basically being hunted and then they have their organs taken for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. I think they imply that this killer was eating them, right? Yeah, like he was kind. Yeah, I believe so. Because these weren't Hannibal's kills. They no. were a different murderer. I think the last one that they did was Hannibal's, right? Like, they, he said, oh, there's a copycat killer who isn't the same one, and it turned out to be Hannibal, right? No, that was the one in the field. The way they figured out people were eating them is because uh, one girl's body is returned untouched, basically. Yeah. Except, you know, the touch part being dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But we, she was, she was killed, but she was intact, basically. <laughs> Nothing yeah. had been removed. But they figure out who, they figure out who the murderer is. But before they go, Hannibal makes a secret call to with the serial killer, and is like, "This is a courtesy call, and we will never speak again." But they know. Mm -hmm. And Will and Hannibal go to the house, and the. The man has completely snapped and killed his wife and is about to kill his daughter before himself and Will shoots him. Yep. And he manages to slit the daughter's uh, jugular, but Will goes in, uh, like, pinches the vein and is able to save her. And Hannibal helps because yeah. he's a doctor. Exactly, yes. And that's where the first arc of the show really is. It's about, well, this girl is also suspected of helping her fathers with the murders mm -hmm. and will also trying to cope with actually killing someone. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's, cause he tries to justify in his mind with like it being self-defense, but also since he always has the mind of a killer, mm -hmm. it doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. It's the fact that he's able to get into the mindset of a killer. That's, that's the worrying part, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And this goes on for a good bit uh, while, while solving other, like, one-episode crimes. Yeah. Yeah, because they, um, they even delve, like, uh, the th sorry, the thing I liked about that, too, is this case doesn't just go away. They c keep coming back to it as the first arc keeps going on. <laughs> yeah. And eventually, the little girl who survived on the picture and we're back sorry about that yep <laughs> internet issues as usual uh abigail was the daughter of the killer and uh the fbi again thinks that she may have been involved especially since one of her friends is killed very shortly after uh after she gets out of the hospital yeah because she's out of the hospital and they take her back to her house and like another girl um that was her friend that got killed right yeah yeah it was one of her best friends from high school yes <clears throat> um and like a guy or, or they i forget if he throws rocks at them or she throws rocks at him or something like that but <laughs> you're breaking up again god damn it sorry about that I, uh so abigail is the daughter of the murder Pete, a really shitty blogger, puts out that she might, that Abigail might also have helped with the murders because she's a tabloid journalist and is a bitch. Like at first, she's, the, yeah, hmm? there, at first she's not too bad, but as it goes on, we're like, oh, you're a piece of shit. Yeah, we find out she's a horrible person. Um, but actually because of this and also since one of abigail's friends dead in in her father's uh, hunting shack people are kind of getting suspect suspecting her but also earlier some boy whose sister was killed by her father mm -hmm. i'm realizing how this is going to get very confusing very quickly yep okay someone think Inks Abigail helped kill their sister and goes to see Abigail and kind of threatens her. He disappears before the cops can really do anything. Then Abigail's friend gets murdered, so obvious suspect is the boy who threatened her. All of a sudden, the boy appears in her house and it's like, no, I didn't kill your friend. <laughs> Abigail, properly freaked out, fucking stabs the guy and accidentally kills him yeah 
but the only one around since Hannibal knocked everyone uh knocked the only other person out. Hannibal comes down and is like, "Yo, they're gonna think you're like super <laughs> a murderer. So how about we go hide the body?" Yeah. Uh, and Abigail's like, "I guess." <laughs> and then they're they're kind of holding a seat secret between each other because Abigail also figures out Hannibal's the one who called her father. Mm-hmm. And then Hannibal's trying to help her recover, and I kind of think is trying to mold her into a killer. Yeah, it's we we still don't a hundred percent know what Hannibal's motive is here or what he's trying to do with her, but clearly he's trying to do something <laughs> to fuck. Yeah, her. we don't know yet, and we still don't kind of know because this plot is kind of dropped a little bit. In- yeah. Cause... In episodes six and seven, because uh, that's when we... Well, no, episode seven, definitely. Mm-hmm. It's dropped because they're starting to catch on to Hannibal's killings. Yeah. And that's kind of where we end, where we figure out Hannibal... They are on Hannibal's trail. And I, I don't know where I was going with that. Uh <laughs> Yeah, because we find out her arc kind of ends when, like, she's trying to help cope. And Han- because she's going kind of going crazy, like, staying in the same place the whole time. And uh, Lawrence Fishburne and her psychiatrist, it's not Hannibal, another psychiatrist woman, I forget her name. But um, I do, too. She um, She's like, no, we need to keep her in a controlled environment until she recovers. And Hannibal's disagreeing a little bit, like, maybe she needs, you know, some fresh air, change of scenery every once in a while. So... Behind the psychiatrist's back, Hannibal invites her over to his house for dinner. And he gives her um, not only that, but he gives her food and psychedelic drugs. <laughs> and he makes the food that her father was making for breakfast the yeah. day he killed, killed her mother and tried to kill her. Yeah, this uh, obviously does not go over well with her psychiatrist. And they get into a bit of an argument and he lies about um, her being uh, him giving her psychedelics. He's like, oh, I gave her a little sedative, so she may still be a little loopy or something. <laughs> and so they go in, and she's talking to her, and she's, like, seeing shit because she's tripping out. And, like, they're because she, I think she sees her mom and dad, and then, like, Hannibal and the Skydress turn into that. And she gives this creepy fucking smile. Like, she, maybe she's lost it, and that's the last we ever see of her in these first seven episodes. <laughs> Yeah, I do hope she comes back, because that would feel like kind of a lame way to end it. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I'm And also, sh- her her saying mom and dad helps with that episode's villain. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I'm sure, I'm sure she'll come back, because the storytelling so far, like how the arcs have been, like how it's been structured, has been really solid, actually. So I'm sure she'll come back. <laughs> um. Also, there is a sort of side plot where Lawrence... Fishburn and his finds out his wife has cancer. Mm-hmm. This kind of isn't that important to the plot, if I'm being honest. No, it's not, but it does like, add, to the main plot. To the main plot, but it, it is it, it is a running theme in the show with her because his wife, her wife, get, or his wife gets cancer, and she's sitting there dealing with it, like like she's obviously having a crisis because she has to deal with the her inevitable death. And Lawrence Fishburne's having a problem because she she refuses to tell him at first. And then when he finds out, he has to deal with that grief, too, because he's like, I'm probably going to lose my wife within the next few years because she's at, like, stage the, four or something. The part I love, though, of the episode where we find this out yeah, is how ironically, like, everyone talks to her like, man, you know what would be shitty? If, so, if you, like, had cancer... And then didn't tell your loved ones. Yeah. Because... That'd be a real dick thing to do. Yeah, because there's, there's a... Because, um, you know, obviously they have a, they have a B-plot each episode that gets wrapped up at the end. But one of the B-plots there is, I think, um, there's this guy going around, like, making people into angels because he has cancer. And they talk to his wife and something snaps in his brain like, oh... Shit. I, I think you made those connections too quickly. It's like he has can't he made people in angels because he has cancer. And yeah, like that's... no, I made that too quickly. But that we find out that he has like a disease that will be killing him, and that's he like... has a brain tumor, which yeah. is the explanation they kind of give for his crazy antics. Mm-hmm. Crazy antics is violent murder yeah. imposing in my book, apparently. 
uh, and he makes people. He can apparently see people as sinners, is what I got from it. Yeah, that one was an interesting one because they left a lot of that like really ambiguous, which was interesting to me. Because <laughs> he somehow got lucky throughout that entire episode, and he got people who were or like cheating their taxes or they were having affairs or something. Yeah. Cause like it was an interesting episode because up until that point, there was nothing like supernatural in the show, but that like kind of sort of hints that maybe there was a higher power showing him something, but it's never really explained. So <laughs> yeah, it isn't. And it ends with him killing himself. Yeah, so we'll never know. Exactly. So yeah, that was an interesting one. <laughs> Okay, I think that's the summary. Plot. Yeah, that's what's going on with the... the main plot and a few side plots. But yeah, that's basically a gist of it. Um... <laughs> so where to next on our on our fun trail? <laughs> Shut up, Brain. That's a stupid joke. Say it anyway. No. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> but uh. Um... So, like, should we talk about, like, elements of the show, like, characters? Or... Yeah, we should probably move on to elements. Like, the things that we liked. Like, do we want to talk, like, show-wise or, like, technical-wise? Oh, uh, let's start with show. Let's stick with show-wise, then we can get into technical okay. shit. Yeah. Um, all of the characters are phenomenal. Like, oh, everyone, They are so well-acted. Everyone, all of the actors do a fantastic job with these characters. Like, they're all memorable. You know who they are. Um, Because in a lot of TV shows, like, I I know it's not a fair comparison, but in, like, shows like Hawaii Five-0 and NCIS or something, you sometimes lose track of people. Like, oh, it's that person and that that person. But no, here, everyone's well-defined. You know who they are. You know what their motives are. It's just a very well-written show. Uh, Like, and the way the, all, like, (sighs) Will Graham and Hannibal, uh, Mads Mikkelsen is Hannibal in particular. They are fantastic. (laughs) Yeah, they work off each other really well and do play these, I guess, mentally... Would mentally damage be a proper term for them? Yeah, because it's hinted that, like, Will ha- like maybe has autism or Asperger's or something. Like, he has social anxieties and stuff like that, so... <laughs> he, he is also technically psychotic in some ways yes he is because he can see in the mind of killers and all that but yeah they like hint that like all of these people like like well i guess hannibal and will graham are both obviously mental in certain aspects but i don't know what you mean about hannibal he seems fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um yeah will he does a fantastic job with the part and because will graham was the person in because i know you watched red dragon that was uh, Edward Norton. Did I? <laughs> that was Edward Norton's character, and in the original, um, he, he's much more better defined in the '80s movie Manhunter and this television show. Like you can see, like how he really gets in the minds of the murderers and stuff. So yeah, I God, Red Dragon was just so meh. Yeah, that's a discussion for without another. Anthony Hopkins, that would have been a bad movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But no, in this one, Will Graham is done fantastic. And Mads Mikkelsen, his take on Hannibal is so different. Yet, every time he's on screen, I get excited. Because he does a fantastic job with the role. I don't... And he does the the whole... I don't know how... I want to say, like, seesaw psychopath. Because mm-hmm. at any moment, the scale can tip the other way. Yes. <laughs> Because we see uh, he actually killed one of uh, Lawrence Fishburg's original investigators as uh, they're looking into his case. Mm -hmm. And he seemed like completely calm, like he was going to help her. And then all of a sudden just sneaks up behind her and strangles her. Yeah. (laughs) I I think that was that was the first time we showed him actually killing someone, right? That's the first time that wasn't really a joke. Yeah, or wasn't like... Because we see moments earlier where it's like, Oh yes, I had to go get something for dinner, and then it shows him charging at someone in the woods yeah. with a knife. Well, no, it doesn't actually show him. It more shows it from his perspective. It just shows like someone yeah. screaming, like "Ah!" and then it quickly cuts back. Like that was the first time we actually saw an on-screen murder of Hannibal killing someone. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like he has this whole air of like he's a very um, you know proper. Um, I had another word for it, but like he. 
it was very like calm and proper and like thoughtful and stuff like that but yeah you're right like when he you can tell that at any moment it just seems like he could snap because knowing knowing hannibal and knowing what he does <laughs> once the jig if he gets caught geez i don't yeah. know what's gonna happen because the um Interesting, because it's one of those things where the audience knows, but none of the characters in the television show do. <laughs> that he's actually a cannibal. Yeah, there's a lot of dramatic irony throughout yeah, the show. Like, and it, it's definitely that thing with Hitchcock. It's like, you know, um, if you have a bomb blowing off, then boom, that's it. It's a couple seconds of shock, but tell them the bomb's going to go off, and all of a sudden you have a bunch of suspense. <laughs> Lawrence Fishberg is a good hard ass and Fishborn. but you can see that his humanity come through every once in a while which is nice yeah because he is he is yeah you're right that that's that is basically the best way to put it he's a hard ass to everybody but <laughs> you can kind of uh, see why the poor chick is a total bitch and I hate her <laughs> <laughs> which I think you're supposed to <laughs> you are I, I just want her to die yeah uh, I can't remember Will's friend, who's the art psychologist, because she has a good job too. But she's probably the least interesting of the characters. Yeah, she. You mean the um Abigail psychiatrist? Yes. Yeah, yeah. She has a good job too, but yeah, it's like she she isn't really she isn't really a main player. Really, it just cuts to her talking to Abigail and stuff, and sometimes like. Um, what's the word? Usually arguing with Hannibal about how to yeah. and uh, Lawrence Fishburne how to treat Will. Yeah, and sometimes we see like them consulting her about a killer, but she's not really she's not in the forefront of the series. She's more of a background character. <laughs> yeah, she's very secondary. Yeah. The villains are usually really creepy. Yes. They do a fantastic job with that. Like everyone, all the different like case to case serial killers or like different people that commit crimes and stuff are all very interesting. Um, so. I'm not sure if I have anything else to really say on the characters. No, just I. So I, far. Yeah, no, but I do definitely love Mads Mikkelsen as Hannibal. I, he is great in this show. He's they made the absolute oh, right choice. Um. <laughs> Another thing I love with Will mm -hmm. is when we're allowed in his mind, like when we want see his dreams or we're in his mind as he sees a scene, mm -hmm. you can really see him tightrope walking that balance of crazy. Yeah, because he imagines him like do himself doing the crimes just so he can get in the head of the serial killer. And like you can see like he sometimes like sometimes his face changes as he's like stabbing someone in his mind or something, so <laughs> Or, um, also you can kind of tell when we're in a dream, mm -hmm. there's always a moment where it's like, okay, this is where something is wrong. Usually. Or when... this is where this isn't Will anymore. This is something else. Usually when a giant fucking deer or elk, whatever it is, shows up for no reason. <laughs> or when he's trying to murder Abigail for some reason. Oh yeah, that does kind of cut to that sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> Mm -hmm. which it that. stopped doing. again it i have a feeling they dropped abigail i think she's gonna come back so far the show has been too good and too well structured to just drop her but there could be a reason they dropped abigail yeah because that episode where um we where she got high on uh i want to say it's peyote because it was put in tea wasn't it a mushroom of some sort that he had it might have been a mushroom, actually. I think it was a mushroom mm. that he blended up and put in the drink. Yeah, you can put a lot of psychedelics in drinks. Yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, that episode has a bit of a story to it. Because it never aired in America. Yeah, because... Yes, we're talking about this. <laughs> yeah, no, I, we have to. Um, yeah. It was called Oif, or however you pronounce that, O-E-U-F. It was the fourth episode of the first season. And it was shortly after, I think it was a few days or so, after the Sandy Hook shootings. And you can tell why it was pulled, because it deals not only with showing children getting brutally murdered on screen, but with children murdering other children, and just the psychological themes and torment 
that these children go through. <laughs> yeah, a uh, quick summary for the A plot of this episode is there is a woman who kidnaps children mm -hmm. and then basically makes them think she is their family and their mother but the only way to keep that is for, to send them back home and have them kill their parents and the rest of their family basically yeah because it really really drops a bombshell on you when will is first going through the murders and he notices that the other two would just kill bang 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 but he notices that like the mother was not killed right away and it, mm -hmm. they were like, maybe she forgave the person who killed her. And he's like, why the hell would he do that? Um, because of a mother's love or something like that. And I was like, oh. You know, I'm not sure if we've done this on the podcast. If we've made like many dark jokes uh -huh. on the podcast. But we usually have a pretty dark sense of humor. This show reaches a point where we can't joke about it too much. Yeah, it gets really fucked up at times, honestly. <laughs> like, this is some brutal shit, honestly. Yeah, I... If you have... We should have probably said this first. If you have a weak... If you're weak when it comes to gore or very harsh psychological themes, mm -hmm. this is not the show for you. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, another thing in this show that it does not shy away from and something you're like, wow, this made it to television was the gore. <laughs> oh yeah. We could talk for a good while on this. God damn. Is that show brutal when it comes to the violence? It's so cool though. <laughs> it's so cool. It is it's so, so cool. cool. It's so cool. But at the same time, so fucked up. Just the, 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 and I think it's all practical for the most part. Yeah. It's pretty practical from what yeah, it I looks don't, like. I haven't really noticed any CG. Like, maybe the moose was a little bit... Like maybe they enhanced the moose, but I think the gore and all, like, the dead bodies and, like, the body parts, it's all practical effects, and they do a fantastic job with that. And the odd part is, even though some of these are real, kind of cartoony or a bit over the top in deaths, mm -hmm. it's still, like, the way the blood looks... And the way the bodies look afterwards, it mm -hmm. still keeps you in this land of realism. Yeah. No. <laughs> like um, go going back to the episode with the cancer patient. When we say make them angels, I mean he skin he takes the skin off people's backs and turns them into wings. Yeah. With, like fish hooks and string. And like when we first saw the bodies, like you could see behind the skin, like you could see like the spine and the rib cage and shit. <laughs> Yeah, it's just fucked. It's fucked. But goddamn, is it cool? <laughs> and yeah, like the first episode too, like when he shoots the person and you see it go through her neck and the blood just splatters on the wall and she bangs oh, her Oh yeah, that's messed up. Just... It's such a cool shot though. Yeah, they do this cool thing a lot where like he's, because he's, you see, he, they show him the crime scene and then does this zoom, zoom effect. And then like it shows the events rewinding like you see like the blood come off the wall and like the bullet come out of their head and like it's intact all of a sudden the blood go inside of them until it gets to the point where they were murdered it's a really cool effect <laughs> yeah and that just that has a lot of fun editing with it um one being in episode seven with the hotel you pointed out mm -hmm. where will walks backwards through the scene and then you see the cops outside the room he closes the door and opens it again and the cops are gone yeah it's such a cool such a cool cut <laughs> uh also you see hannibal actually chopping up uh, some of the body parts, like the lungs or the liver yeah the lungs were the first thing that came to mind because i think that was the first thing they showed him cutting up <laughs> Uh, or it's just because seeing lungs is very odd. Yeah, <laughs> also true. I mean, it's not every like, day. Like, how many dishes do you have with lung in it? Yeah, well, it, it's a, well, and I mean, I'd expect that from Hannibal because clearly he's a very, um, a very, very, very good cook. Like, all of his dishes are very fancy. It's like this with a side of, like, sauce and, like, drizzled with this and, like, sautéed in this and stuff. It's really cool. <sighs> yeah. Also, uh, going to the food real quick, uh, another thing 
make uh, another rule of making the show is all the food was made to look delicious. Like, yeah, after everything was prepared, like... After everything's prepared, it's made to look delicious to kind of screw with the audience head. Yeah, because, Audience's like, head. Yeah, because he puts the dishes, like, he has Will... Well, I don't think he ever has Ellie. I think he has Lawrence Fishburne over the most, yeah? Yeah, and uh, the uh, female psychologist. Yeah, and clearly he takes some kind of, like sadistic pleasure in feeding people human meat without them knowing that it's human meat because it doesn't look like human meat. <laughs> well, can you really tell what meat is meat? Yeah, I mean, that's fair too, but... <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's... it's Just, man, I, I'm trying not to just be like, yeah, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool, because it's, it's, it's so well done so far. <laughs> I... I love the dishes because they like, they're always these very style. They're very stylized. They, they have like um certain foods cut cup to look like flowers. Mm -hmm. It's, it seems like they up the vibrance of the color when looking at the dishes just to make it look more tasty out and, and, um, I don't know, the right flavorful. I guess would be the word. Succulent. <laughs> Succulent. Yeah, that works. But, uh, yeah, it, it's like something you'd see at a very, like, fancy high-scale restaurant. That's the kind of dishes that he serves. I never go to Wendy's, so I wouldn't know what that's like. You know, that's really weird that you said that. Why? Guess what I was eating tonight. <laughs> like, beforehand, I was literally eating Wendy's. I have my Wendy's cup right here. <laughs> I just thought, like, okay, what's a fast food place, but higher class than Burger King? <laughs> okay, that's not exactly a really high bar there. <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, getting back on topic. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of what I, I think that's good for the, um, any other, like, show stuff you want to mention? or Um, we did get a bit off topic on the episode that didn't air, mm -hmm. uh, because... What I was going to say is, since that didn't air in America, they may have dropped the Abigail story since a very large... Por like, a lot of character shit happens in episode four. But the thing is, I we don't know if they... We, we don't know if they... Sh I'm not sure if they shot it all at once or if they shot it, like, week to week. I don't either. So. I don't think they would have because they even in the first three episodes there's some really good setup for it. So it's true. Just to drop that, I I I don't know. It 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 all depends on like was this the creator's intention or like did the studio get involved maybe? Because I I don't know how TV shooting schedule works. Because sometimes they shoot it all at once. Sometimes they like go episode by episode. I don't know when they were produced. I don't know the lag time between when they were produced and when they were aired. So I can't, that's why I'm hesitant to say like just because it wasn't aired doesn't mean they don't bring it up again. I guess we'll have to see. We'll find out because it's only the first seven episodes. So. <laughs> yep. Uh, we are going to stop middle season of all Hannibal just because it's it's linear enough to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, it has enough, like, main plot stuff going on where it's not really, um... It, it's serialized, I should say. That's the right word. It's not really a week-to-week yeah. -week thing. <laughs> uh... Excuse me. Nice. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else character-wise or... I guess we can go to technical. Yeah, like, technical. um... The cinematography is goddamn beautiful. <laughs> Oh, every set is so just interesting to look at. Yeah, like Hannibal's office, like he has this office, but it's like a two-story office, so he has like a stairway that he can walk up, and there's like bookshelves on top. It's really cool. There's bookshelves. And even though it's a very dim color palette, because again, the show is not co exactly covering the happiest of themes, mm -hmm. it, it still kept, I guess, gothic would be a good term for it you know that would be a good term actually i'd say yeah that's, that's appropriate it's kept very gothic and still interesting there's a lot of angles or shadows or mm -hmm. and anytime color is really there it pops 
because of all the gray. Yeah, because like the the moments they want you to like really like come at you that they really do pop with that. Like whenever Will goes in the mind, the color palette gets a lot brighter and all that. So the red is always like the red of blood is always very vibrant. Yeah, yeah, it's not like um, it's not Except, like actually. I think when main characters are hit, that's when it's or when it's just sort of um when like Abigail stabs the guy. Mm -hmm. I think I I'm not we did watch this over a good couple of weeks, so yeah. forgive me if I get something wrong. Uh the blood was darker coming out. Mm. Like it was still a darker red because probably because that's a more serious moment. It's like yeah, oh, shit. they didn't want you to focus on God, look at all the blood. They wanted you to focus on this person's dead. How is this character going to react to it? <laughs> Which, if I'm remembering that correctly, that's a really good touch. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's interesting because the blood is, like you said, very vibrant as opposed to like a lot of our, like even our movies do that a lot where it's like, it looks like, like raw sewage coming off of them. It's like a, this dark, dark, you can hardly tell it's like red. I hate that. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't remember the last time I lost a shit ton of blood, so I don't remember what it looks like. That, no, no, I'm saying like in our movies. Yeah, in our raid movies, it's darker. Like a lot of times they make the blood like look like almost like raw sewage. It's like really dark and you can't even tell that it's blood. But no, here the blood really pops is why I was saying. That has nothing to do with you losing blood. <laughs> I know, but I was wondering if like that's a more realistic look of blood. Maybe. Who knows? Because it's not... I know it's not neon. No, it's not neon, no, but... I'm pretty sure it's red. <laughs> well, yeah, it's red, but it could be dark red. Could be, yes. But Maybe they had too much iron in their diet. I don't know. Oh, well, that's also true. But that's a discussion for another time. <laughs> it turns out every villain in that art action movie... <laughs> in every villain in John Wick turned out to have too much iron in their diet. <laughs> they had, like, an iron... All of them happened to have an iron deficiency. <laughs> Deficiency means not enough. Oh, no, sorry. I had too much iron, yeah. <laughs> I thought John Wick's blood popped, though. There weren't, it wasn't really super dark. It enough. did, but it was the blightiest action movie I could think of off the top of In my head. In recent memory, yeah. But... <laughs> of recent years, yeah. I should say. But, um, yeah, so that's really well done. Um, the music's also... The, the... School, the yeah. music is creepy as hell, and I love it. They do such a good job with the music. The music is creepy and it just adds to this atmosphere the show has. It's really because it, it really it, it is grounded in reality, but it does have like these trippy moments. So it's it's like a very atmospheric type show. It's it's fascinating to watch. It's so cool. Oh, shit. We did forget to mention something about Will. OK. He owns all the dogs. Yes. Because it he, he he doesn't like knowing people he doesn't like people friends he's... so he basically takes in any stray dog he finds and his house is just full of yes. dogs and it's great yeah because it shows like one time like he was walking around and he found a stray dog and he stopped and led into his car and took it home and then there was like all these other stray dogs he took and we were like yeah <laughs> that's nothing to do with the plot or character growth it's just puppies yeah. and that makes me happy Anyway. And then fucking, like, he had Hannibal feed them one time when he was away, so... He, yeah, he cares about, nice. cares cares about the puppers. <laughs> That's probably the most unrealistic thing on the show, is it's like, oh, this murder's happening all the way in Virginia, and they yeah. get there in two hours or something. Yeah, I... I... I don't know if they like, yeah, because they, I know that isn't the point of the show, but they do jump around from town to town very fast. Like, they don't even mention, like, oh, it's going to be a long haul, but it just kind of shows them there. It's like, oh, we're back here, and then all of a sudden, oh, we're back at the FBI headquarters. <laughs> oh, yeah, the body's still fresh. What do you mean? You were in D.C., and this is all the way in, like, North New York. Yeah. I think one of them was, like, in New Jersey or something, Yeah. Yeah. I was like, Jesus Christ, that's not exactly a short detour. That's just... I mean, it does show in the first episode they have, like, their own private jet, but still. I think they first show... Like, it always has them coming out of a car to a crime scene, so... <laughs> well, you have to get out away from the airport somehow. Also, They're not going to... Yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing <laughs> if they just always landed the jet near the crime scene. <laughs> 
It'd be funny too if they like all of these cars that the FBI you you were using were rental cars. <laughs> <laughs> like like in one episode you see him driving one of those tiny cube yeah, cars. Exactly. That'd be funny. Again, we may entirely be adding, trying to add humor to Troy because we don't want to talk about the really dark shit that happens in the show. <laughs> There is so much talk about morality, and I find it interesting. Yeah, there's talk about morality, there's mo talk about mortality, like themes of life, death, religion, um, psych obviously psychological themes, because Hannibal's a psychiatrist, so they delve into a lot of people's heads. It's just, a f it's fantastic with all the shit that it dives into. It's not afraid to shy away from brutal violence or heavy, heavy psychological themes. <laughs> Also, uh, a thing I love, a touch I love is the morticians at the FBI are all very darkly comedic yes. because I, we mentioned this in earlier episode. Uh, it was Gravity Falls. Trying to remember, Gravity Falls. Yes, because they had the morticians there. Yes, yeah, it is Gravity Falls. Okay, yeah, we mentioned this in Gravity Falls, but morticians do have a dark sense of humor to deal with dead bodies all the time. Yeah, because, like, I, I didn't mention this, but, like, at first I was like, um, is this supposed to be funny? You realize there's a shit here. Then I remembered, oh, yeah, they're morticians. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, oh, I love that touch. It's very, it's very clever, and I just enjoy it. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, the practical effects look fucking great. I think we've already mentioned this, but. Yeah, we geez. did, but just special praise to that. They did fantastic. Oh, it looks so brutal, but also oddly beautiful. It's so yeah. good. Yeah, like, I remember, like, the one with the mushrooms growing out of people. Like, it was fucking disgusting, but at the same time, it's like, that looks so cool. <laughs> or the nurse in episode 7 who's impaled with, like, seven different oh, poles or something. Yeah, like, just a cartoonish amount of, like, shit sticking out of her. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and the eye gouge in that episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, so good. When he goes in the mind of the killer and like, he, he, yeah, he will envisions himself like poking your eyes. And I was just like, oh, uh, show you can show that on TV. But if that woman showed her nipples mm. and we are not getting into that discussion. <laughs> that is that, a topic for another fucking day. That would day. add another hour to this because I have so much to say on that. <laughs> yeah, that that's something for another day. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I think we should end it here, honestly, unless there's anything else you want to talk about. Um, uh, about the show, no. I don't think I have anything else to talk about. Okay. But, uh, should we, because <laughs> I know last episode of Ian of the East, we talked about the rules of the TV wheel, but we've changed those again. Sure, go ahead. Should we mention, or should we wait till next episode to talk about them? Nah, just announce it early. Just, just make sure people okay. know now. <laughs> okay, so we talked about last time how we were going to try to do uh, the TV wheel. However, I realized the problem because uh, we were going. What we we're going to do is we we're going to spin the wheel again after season one of Hannibal, and then uh, watch whatever show it lands on. Then go back and do season two, spin the wheel again, that sort of thing. But then I realized if it hits another show with multiple seasons, we're kind of screwed there. Because then we would like spin the wheel, have to watch a show, watch Hamble season two, watch season two of whatever show that, whatever the other show was, and then spin the wheel again. Yeah, because it's entirely possible just because of a random chance that we, we might like watch the first season and then not even land on it until the wheel's over. So still... Well, no, we were going to go back to season two. Uh, the other option was, oh, just put season two back on the wheel and spin it. But like you just said, we might be screwed by chance and never watch that season again. Mm -hmm. So we're doing this. <laughs> There's two wheels now for TV. One is shows that are two seasons or less. Well, we just said And the shows. other... I think, huh? I think they're... Th was it two or less, or was it just short shows? Short shows, which is usually about two or less. Okay, okay. I would say. Basically under 50 episodes, let's say. Yeah. Like, a little over 50 little or under 50, that's a short show. Yeah. We can go. That's so we can cover Full Metal Alchemist. We're not going to lie. 
Uh, <laughs> but, okay, so after we finish Season 1 of Hannibal, we're going to spin that wheel of short shows. Between each season, we'll do that. Mm-hmm. And we'll have the second wheel, which is longer shows, which is about three seasons or more. We didn't go above five seasons, I think. Yeah, because we just didn't want to get like two ridiculously long shows. I think I think five. You're right. I think that's like the longest that we have. Maybe five. That's the six. limit we have at the moment. Later on, we might put something longer, like X Files or whatnot, on there. Yeah, but we'll see. But yeah, the problem is there. There is other stuff we want to cover, and like as much as I love the X Files, that's eleven seasons and two movies. So <laughs> yeah, technically we do have Archer on there, which is ten seasons, but one season is. It's probably going to be a season yeah. episode we'll talk about. Because those are only like 10 per season and they're only half hour shows. So it's a really short season for that. Yeah. So it's nothing too intense. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, after we finish Hamble, that's when we'll spin the longer season wheel, I longer series wheel. And in between seasons of the longer seasons uh, of the longer shows, we will watch shorter shows such as animes or one season shows, stuff like that. Yeah, I'll have to go back at the list and double check. I want to make sure like none of these have running storylines because I think we should be good. I think all of them like we can stop mid season and all that, <laughs> or not not mid season like between seasons. I'm sure there's gonna be a cliffhanger, but hey, Americans that uh, Americans and Brits have to wait usually a good couple of months before season two or season three comes out yeah because they usually take like a mid like they usually take a season break because for a lot of fall shows it's they start airing in the fall and then go through till like january or february and then you have to wait Mm -hmm. for the summer and then it'll come back next fall so yeah that's how it works a lot of times um but yeah and (laughs) also did we decide that we're taking shows off the wheels and then and wait until the tv wheels are done and replacing everything like we do the movie wheels I think that's a good call, yes. Okay, because that we're way, doing that. That way, too. if we take it off, we'll have less of a chance of, you know... <laughs> yeah, that way we don't have, you know, some show stuck on there forever because our chances are apparently terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically okay. that. So that's, that's what we've decided to do. Um, other rules may be subject to change. Um, so we'll find out. Give us a break. We're not even 30 episodes into this podcast. <laughs> We're not. This, uh, this is episode 29. Actually, just because I like seeing how long it takes episodes to come out, episode 20 came out a day, yesterday. Yes. When we're recording this. And this is episode 29. Okay. So, yeah, we'll see how... Yeah, we have a bit of a backlog. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> that backlog's gonna get worse. We'll explain later. Uh, but, yeah, I think we're good there, yeah? Uh, yeah, okay, so that's uh, the first part of Hannibal, and a reasonably long episode without us having too many intermissions. Yeah, that was Hannibal Season 1, Part 1, I guess, for us, so. <laughs> uh, next should be Francis Ha, huh? right? I believe so. Okay. Is that what we landed on? <laughs> yeah, next is Francis okay, Ha, it's Francis I'm pretty ha, sure. Then. All right. Yeah, because we've been pretty in sync with, uh, yes. like, going back and forth and recording. All right. So next episode is Francis Hodd. Then we'll finish up Hamble season one and then we'll see what the fuck we get. Yep. So it's exciting. So yeah, we'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Eh.